What is going on guys? Officer O'Leary here, back again at Six Flags Great Adventure on a pretty busy Friday night. It's not totally packed, but it's it's pretty darn busy for sure. And uh, here we are standing in front of two of the five B&Ms we have here in the park. Brett Green Lantern up here. I also brought a dollar in with me so I can ride El Toro. I've been like meaning to bring cash in with me because my debit card doesn't swipe at any of the, uh, the um, locker kiosks. So, oh wow, look at that. <laughs> That's old school looking. I'm not even sure what the hell that is. It's like a Cadillac Coupe de Ville, maybe? I don't know. Right up here next to these uh, sheriff cars, you can see Six Flags is advertising uh, jobs available starting at 11 50 an hour. Um, I don't know exactly what jobs those are because most of the jobs in the park are probably minimum wage. So it says jobs available. That just leads me to believe that that's only for a certain job. Maybe two jobs. I, I have no clue. Maybe to work in HR, you get 11 50 I'm joking. Zag, post down in the comments. No, I'm joking. <laughs> All right. To anybody thinking about coming here and just buying a ticket for the night, you might as well just buy a season pass because the season pass is good for all of 2019 as well. Um, so that's a really good deal. You get the rest of 2018 and then all of 2019. So if you just like go up to the window and buy a season pass instead of wasting like $70 on um, like a day ticket, you can totally save a ton of money. Not too bad in here. Yeah, I looked at the parking lot, like, the parking lot wasn't nearly as bad as I've seen it recently, and then, yeah, it looks pretty decent. <laughs> we're gonna walk around and see what some of the wait times look like. I'm gonna go to the Flash Pass headquarters right now, and uh, we're gonna get a skip the line pass for El Toro. Because, of course, you know, Toro always has a crazy long line during Fright Fest, so might as well just see if I can't avoid that. <laughs> that spooky atmosphere pumping here in Main Street. <laughs> It's crazy the difference between like a heavy crowd level day and like a medium crowd level day. There's not a ton of people here right now. It's <laughs> <Here, I> just... <laughs> I love that stupid little animatronic thing. It's not even really, like, it is an animatronic, yes, but like it's not like super advanced. It's not like anything Disney would ever make. It's like the film that's having some technical issues. I think they actually shut it off during Fright Fest, but there's like one LED that's still on. The two actually, that's weird. <laughs> All right, success. I got my once daily skip the line pass for El Toro. And before we head over yes. towards uh Both sides of the skylight are running tonight. Very nice. Might catch a ride. About to head into the demon district. I really love these. Whoa. This was added after Fright Fest started. I don't remember seeing this at all. Cow car, which is admittedly hard to look at at night. Oh my god, that light bar is so bright. Oh. <laughs> this laser effect is always awesome. Ooh, I didn't even got it. <laughs> it's crazy. In order to ride Batman, you pretty much have to get scared. It's great. <laughs> I kind of want to know what this apparatus is down here. It's like a big tube on the ground. It's kind of hard to see because it's dark, but I don't know. I'm not sure what the heck that was about. Oh my god. Gotta get out of here. <laughs> I can't handle too much.
cool. <laughs> I haven't seen that one yet. That animatronic's pretty awesome, not gonna lie. And it wasn't here when Fright Fest started. Same thing with the entrance over here to Demon District. I think that's really awesome though, it looks really cool. Little thunder train over here. I know it's kind of hard to see when I'm doing these nighttime vlogs. It's actually especially hard for me to see when I have my brightness turned all the way down and I'm recording. Chainsaws. Doesn't scare people. Oh. <laughs> oh man, that's great. Those chainsaw guys are especially terrifying because they can just like have their chainsaw off and then if they see somebody they want to scare, they just crank it and it scares the crap out of people every time. Every time. Got blood drums going hard over there. That attracts quite the crowd. <laughs> right over here is a scare maze I haven't covered yet. This one's called Reflections of the Dead. It's got quite the queue out here too. I actually didn't know that this was a maze until just now. It looks like a lot of fun. No clue what that one's about, but uh, it's pretty scary. This dance party featuring Halloween hits where you're the star. Say bye. <laughs> that was really weird. I turned around and there was some guy like snarling at me from behind. He was like, oh, oh. I don't know if he was trying to be a scare actor or what. Like, that was weird. <laughs> Sugar Shack doesn't seem to have too much of a line over here. Those Belgian waffles are delicious. I actually came here once and had them for breakfast. It was like one of the vlogs I did earlier this season. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's not even a scare actor. <laughs> Out here in front of Yum Yum Palace, right there where those kids are standing. Actually, used to stand a couple of Looney Tunes characters, and you could actually eat in there and get meet and greets with the characters. Kind of wish they didn't do away with that, because that's actually a really fun concept. You just imagine sitting inside there and having, like, uh, you know, Bugs Bunny come around to your table or something. And, yeah, I think that'd be really awesome. Six Flags should do something like that. Teacups over here. Like, when you come to Fright Fest, expect there to be lines where you've never seen lines before. Like the teacups. I never see any waits for the teacups during any other time of the year, except for Fright Fest. It's got a good solid 10-15 minute line right there. Here inside the recently reopened arcade. Looking pretty fresh in here. It's cool that they kept on a lot of the old machines that were in the old one. Including the doors. These are original doors. <laughs> Of course, before it had a really nasty, overwhelming mold smell, which uh, has since gone away since they remodeled it. But, ooh. Ah, this one, this one. <laughs> well, I don't on the bench. That guy's like the Ronald McDonald statue of uh, Carnival. You could just like sit right next to him and get like a photo. <laughs> Funny. Heading into the Golden Kingdom Adventure Outpost. Of course, you guys already know where I'm going. I'm going to Machu Picchu. I grab a burrito and then probably ride El Toro. Oh yeah. More people trying to be scare actors. <laughs> Out here in front of La Cantina, they've uh, painted a new light on the pavement here. Apparently starting October 19th, which is today, uh, through the end of Fright Fest, guests will no, longer permit, uh, will no longer be permitted to walk through the park with alcoholic beverages. Um, it's pretty interesting. I guess they're having issues with people drinking outside of uh, the bars. I, I don't really understand what the issue is, but so yeah, Six Flags stuff. All right, I just got done with my delicious macho nacho burrito. Uh, they changed up the ingredients a little bit. Like they used to use like diced vegetables as the salsa inside the burritos, but now they're actually using real salsa. So I don't know how I feel about that because it has like real jalapenos in it and I don't like real jalapenos. Anyway, yeah, we're about to head on to El Toro using my once daily skip the line pass. Um, 
my whole plan right here is to basically get on it and then as soon as they pull back into the station try and find an empty row like there's definitely not gonna be an empty row but chances are there'll be like a single rider somewhere on the ride so i'll try and grab an empty seat if i can because there's a pretty long line right there right now couldn't tell you exactly how long the line is but it's definitely over an hour so i'm um, gonna basically see how many rides there without leaving the station probably zero but we're gonna try anyway holy crap I just rode Toro six times in a row. <laughs> Literally, every time I got up, I would just wait until the air gates closed, and then I would look for an empty row, like, really fast. Like, not an empty row, but an empty seat. I actually ended up finding, like, two empty rows. Like, the air gates opened, and the people just weren't walking in. I guess they were waiting, like, for their friends or something. I have no idea. Anyway, yeah, that was insane. Holy crap. Got a lot of extra room on some of those rides. Just flying out of my seat. All I'm standing over there by that sign behind me. It's like people are always lost. I always see people walking up to the sign just like uh, like looking at it like they don't know where they're going so I have to help them. I love helping people. It's just like part of my thing. I don't know. Anyway, the sign for final gigs is looking pretty gnarly. It's like 10.45 and I smell like Code 95. Code 95 is um, weed. Somebody smoking weed. I definitely have El Toro hair right now, that's for sure. <laughs> Out here behind the portal to Carnival. <laughs> We're gonna walk this way through the boardwalk. Heading into Carnival. Let's see what's going on over here in this section of the park. I haven't been over here yet today. starting to get a little bit colder out. The lines for Rita's have gotten smaller and smaller. This is when you know it's time to remove a ride. It's Fright Fest, park's pretty crowded, and there's six people riding, seven people riding Twister. Like, that just shows you how popular this ride is. It's just not popular at all. Probably like the second least popular ride in the park, maybe behind like Ninja Tune. A giant coaster right behind it. Uh, I'm really not a fan of this ride. I think it's cool though. I'm just not really a personally fan of it, mostly because of the restraints. It's got really uncomfortable like restraints. There it is. Also, I got Island Fusion flavored Ritas. It's delicious. I love Ritas ice. And it's cool because most Ritas locations are closed now that it's getting colder outside. So the ones inside, the ones inside Six Flags Park stay open, which is awesome. Right over here by the exit to Aftermath and Hellfest, I believe. You guys can see this misting pipe. It's hard to see right now, but there's a pipe here and it has a valve you can turn on and off at pretty much your own will. So you can literally just walk up to this thing and turn it on and off um, whenever you want. Pretty interesting. Even when it's cold out, you can do it. There's a lot of people hanging out over here by Ka. I'm probably not going to be able to ride Ka. It's probably got like a huge line, but we're going to go and check it out anyway. I'm sorry, I'm in Subblock 6, not Aftermath. <laughs> Aftermath is on the other side of the park, I think. I forget. I don't know. Pretty much every Fright Fest, a lot of the mazes end up moving around, like going into different sections, and they're not in the same way. Right, we just ran into Marcus over here by Kyle. What's going on, man? So, How long did you wait for this? I, well, I didn't go on. Oh, it's you didn't an go hour on. wait. An hour wait. Yeah, I actually just came over here to see how long the wait was. I wasn't about to wait in that. <laughs> anyway, nice running into you guys. Uh, have, a, have a good, nice last hour. <laughs> Bye. Hey, that was really cool. Nice meeting in you guys. Oh, wait, meeting in, nice running into you guys. I can't speak right Anyway, you guys heard it from Marcus. Apparently this thing has an hour long wait. Oh my gosh. Yep, yep that's about an hour long. <laughs> Screw that. <laughs> oh my gosh. I can't wait till Fright Fest is over, partially so I can ride these coasters without having to wait an hour. There's this magical time in the park between Fright Fest and Holiday in the park where it's pretty much empty. It's open on the weekend still after Fright Fest, but the park's dead because there's no event going on and it's cold outside. El Toro's open, King of Kaz is still open. So it's definitely worth it to come out here uh, after Fright Fest is over if you're not keen on waiting online. Believe me though, if you're not really into lines, Fright Fest can be kind of annoying. You should take like the same lighting they have over here by Ka and put it by El Toro because it definitely needs some lights over there. There, there just is not enough lighting. Whew, behind the ominous music I can hear Green Lantern roaring in the background. 
for God's sakes, like, why can't they change the wheels on that thing? Like, I know there's a couple different wheel variations that they can use on the B&M coasters, and for some reason, oh my God, it's this thing, Raptor at Cedar Point also is really loud. But like, if you notice coasters like Nitro and like Superman, they're just not nearly anywhere near as loud as Green Lantern or Raptor. I don't understand why. Also, screw what I said before about the line at Twister. Like, what the hell? I just walked over to King Ka and came back out, and the line is a good 10, no, it's not 10 minutes. It's like a solid cycle. I, they could probably fit everyone on this ride. I love when Six Flags uses promotional stuff from other parks. Seriously, look at that thing. We don't have a boomerang. We don't have one of those observation things. And we don't have an SNS shot tower. Or a wooden coaster that looks anything like that. Good job, Six Flags. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's like not even a regular boomerang though. It looks like a giant inverted boomerang, but like, you look here, it's a regular boomerang. I don't know. The side show over here is looking kind of dead tonight. I think it's uh, over for the night. Last show is at 9.45 on Friday night. And it's like 11 something. <laughs> I love Top Glow, like that game is really fun. Too bad it's expensive and I don't feel like buying a game. Like back in the day when I used to work at iPlay, we used to be able to play the Midway games for free. Um, just because we, we worked there. Some good interactivity here with the clowns. I'm to finish these readers fast, it's starting to melt. <laughs> I think we're gonna walk around the portal this time, just so I don't drop anything. <laughs> People here outside Daredevil Dive getting geared up, ready to go. Hope you're not scared of fights. <laughs> well, that was really weird. Some lady just walked up to me. She's like, I know you got a lighter. Give me a lighter. I need a lighter. I don't have a lighter. I don't smoke. <laughs> like, what on here? God. I gotta go. <laughs> no, thank you. <laughs> yeah, that girl is trying to get me hard right there. Pretty awesome fog effect they have over here. To tell you the truth, I don't know if I've actually been scared at all tonight. Like, no one's truly gotten me scared. Ooh, I didn't even got me. Not tonight at least. But as you guys can see, I'm heading out toward the exit. About to conclude my night here. Got to Marathon Toro, even though it had an hour long wait. That's a really good tip actually. If you guys are here by yourself, just uh, wait until the air gates close when you get off a coaster and see if there's an empty seat. Because Six Flags totally does not care if you ride again if there's an empty seat. Like, that's pretty good. I think if you guys are familiar with Cedar Ferris policy, you're not allowed to ride again once you get off. So you gotta go all the way around. Actually, I don't know if that's 100% true or not. I think if you go back behind the air gates and wait, you can go again at Cedar Fair, but I don't, I don't know. Uh, time to call it the night. All right, that's gonna do it for today. Thank you guys so much for tuning in as usual, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace out.